levels keep rising, your body is constantly fighting to keep the pH and the blood at the same level. So it has so mm -hmm. many processes to fight. And one yep. of them is ammonia mixes with the keto acid salts and it, it neutralizes each other. And in that neutralization, your body creates bicarbonate, which is the main reason you take baking soda. So your body mm -hmm. already knows how to create its own bicarbonate. But people that take the baking soda, they disrupted that mechanism very quickly. Yeah. And baking soda has sodium, which I'm sure you are aware, Filinov says, don't eat salt uh, yeah, yeah. after. Today, I got to speak with Artu, a breathing coach from Finland who recently came back from Filinov's Montenegro dry fasting retreat. He completed an eight and a half day dry fast with Filinov and gave us some great details and insights on how his journey went. If you've wondered what a Filinov retreat looks like, this conversation will be the one you don't want to miss. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you swing by the dryfastingclub.com website and sign up as a free member for full access to the newest information about dry fasting. If you're a data-driven dry fasting experimenter, we're looking for you for some future dry fasting club projects. Reach out to me at yannick at dryfastingclub.com or find me on the dryfastingclub.com Discord group. Now let's get back into the interview. It's hard to know who's telling the truth and not when it goes to those insane days, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, do you want, I guess uh, I can kind of introduce you a little bit. I know um, you reached out to me and you were just recently at uh, Dr. Filinov's retreat in Montenegro and you went through yeah. the 11 day dry fast and, and can you, um, just kind of give us like a little intro. How, when did you go? Uh, and when did you finish your refeed? Uh, and maybe a little bit about yourself because you are a breathing coach, right? And, uh, venturing into the world of dry fasting. So yeah, here's a little intro. Yeah. There's many things already. So, uh, uh, I participated the uh, Filona retreat. retreat. Uh, I started the exit like two weeks ago. This is the fifteenth day of uh, refeeding now. So, and uh, I was fasting there like eight and a half day, eight days, not eleven. So oh, I was eight, doing a little eight bit. Eight and a half. Li okay. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, I think nobody in the retreat did the uh, eleven days. Oh, it's pretty that's normal, interesting. Normal that uh, we're doing like from five to nine days, right. nine days is kind of the, kind of the goal. That's cool because, uh, Filinov kind of is known for saying 11 days is like the top, top healing level. But recently I've heard that he's kind of pushed it back a little bit for more safety, I guess, or just more ease for the fasters. Yeah. It looks like that. Yes. So I and, think the nine days is kind of the rule currently and uh give us an intro like uh what like you, this is r2 i i don't think i said your name i don't know if i'm saying it correctly r2 yeah a r t t u r2 per perfect r2d2 yeah <laughs> perfect uh so yeah. just, like tell us about like how you discovered fasting and uh maybe your life before dry fasting before you tried this yeah so uh i uh, i found out I, I went to lab and i had some uh stomach issues like uh Quite mild, nothing like severe illness or something like that. Dysbiosis, uh, one parasite, a um, uh, little bit, little bit yeast, and uh, these kind of uh, things in the stomach caused some flatulence, some uh, mild, uh, minor stomach problems. And I went to uh, trying different things to things to heal it and. Uh, at some point, I ended up like reading about uh, fasting. I've been doing intermittent fasting and uh, water fasting and these things like that uh, before. And I ended up reading about Dr. Filanov and uh, dry fasting and your page also and uh, was studying it a lot. And uh, then I did this kind of liver cleanse, which is uh, part of the Filanov program. And I really got real results like immediately. So it, it really helped. And after that, I started to dig in more and more into this dry fasting thing. And uh, then I saw there's a retreat coming and I just just uh, booked my place and went there. Amazing. Um, is the, the breathing coaching thing you've been doing for a long time? 
Yeah, that's uh, that's for a long time. I don't even remember how many years. I believe my first touch to breathing was like 20 years ago. And uh, after that, I've been studying oh, wow. it uh, from different angles and perspectives a long time. And uh, uh, I think it was maybe 10, 7 years ago, I started to teach it to others. I was asked to do that. And, uh, and uh, during the years, I've kind of combined all the different traditions, the knowledge, experience that I have to uh, very simple, simple events and uh, simple techniques and series to normal people to get as get fast as possible uh, results with the stress mostly, better recovery, um, more, you know, relaxed, relaxed way of living and uh, being more healthy, very uh, simple stuff. For for breathing, um, I actually came fasting with Trevor. I always to wa I watched his videos a while back and I remember him talking about him getting past day 15 and trying which very few people in the world have ever gotten past and he was trying to explain how difficult it can get and how conserving water becomes a number one concern and he started talking a little bit about breathing exercises i don't know if you mm. have any experience with this but apparently there's some breathing exercises that help you conserve water where you're not breathing through the mouth and so i i i tried asking uh, Trevor about it, but he basically just, he doesn't really have a strong grasp of breathing. He basically just says, breathe it in really deeply and exhale through the nose. And you need to do this to like, re if you're in a good environment in your water, you can absorb moisture apparently and conserve your evaporation. Um, I don't know if there's any breathing techniques for this that you would know about. Well, if you're dry fasting, uh, well, it's very normal that mouth is very dry and uh, first thing is to uh, breathe all the time through the nose and having the tongue tongue uh, touching the roof of the mouth tip of the tongue be uh, behind the upper teeth uh, that helps a lot in fact when you're dry fasting and you start to breathe through the mouth you will immediately feel it in practice that you're losing losing the moisture from the mouth and yeah. they have researched that too. I, I believe it was 42% more uh, losing uh, moisture when breathing through the mouth compared to the breathing through the nose. I believe it. And uh, so very, very relaxed, slow, deep uh, nose breathing is, I think, the best what we can do uh, during, uh, during dry fasting. And also breathing less air. Like, but then you have to kind of know what you're doing. You can read about uh, oxygen advantage or uh, Buteyko type of practices for that. But very relaxed, small, uh, easy breathing through the nose. That's enough. Nothing fancy there. When you say <laughs> uh, the breathe less air, basically to stop you losing evaporation, right? Well, there's uh, many things you can rise the carbon dioxide dioxide levels in the blood and therefore uh, kind of enhance the oxygen delivery to the cells because the oxygen is uh, kind of binding to the hemoglobin if there is not enough uh, carbon dioxide in the blood so therefore when we breathe a little bit less carbon dioxide uh, levels rise and therefore, the release of the oxygen becomes kind of better. It's called Bohr effect in science. Oh, very cool. Uh, so you mentioned uh, that you started dry fasting. Do you know where you, where you heard it for the first time? I think it was in the internet. Internet. Like yeah. a random page, or do you know? Is there like a specific forum that you follow that it was on? It could be you. <laughs> it could have been could mine. Be you, but... Yeah. It <laughs> could be. I'm not sure. I, I was Amazing. really researching a lot because uh, before I started, because it's kind of uh, you know, when you first bump into the subject, it sounds a little bit like uh, crazy, you know. And, That's what uh, I was going like... to ask. What's that first thought? Yeah, I think. Uh, I was just very curious when I get enthusiastic in something and uh, uh, I simply study it and uh, I'm very kind of open minded and quite cool with this. So, uh, 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 it was not a problem for me that, you know, OK, I saw, OK, people do nine days, people do seven days. OK, 
how is this done and what's the benefits, what are the risks. And uh, I was reading a lot, uh, as much as I could find from the internet and uh, also bought some books. Uh, August Dunning and uh, mm -hmm. Filonov and uh, all these guys. Yeah, I always think that uh, Filonov's book is fantastic. Uh, but August Dunning's book is like uh, one of the best intro books to convince somebody to drive fast. Yeah. Because he really writes pretty convincing and he uses uh, some science when it comes to like lysosomes and your autophagy, which really resonates with some people that are hard to persuade. Uh, if they're just like, yeah. nope, science says n can't go longer than three days. And then they read some of his science and are just like, hmm. But that that was uh, my, that's my issue. And I'm really glad you said you found my page because technically it's still very early stages. And my goal is to basically kind of provide it, the information to people that have never done it to just those beginners. Um and yeah, my goal is to provide as much research as possible. I actually, uh, on that page, I'm, I'm still writing so much and I have so much more to write, but I'm slowly upgrading it and adding more research into it. So that- Yeah, that... It's, it's, it's amazing and great. And uh, I remember I was in the, in, the, in the retreat and I was reading one of your articles and uh, I just sent you an email like, thank you that you're doing this. I think uh, it's great information and very kind of, short easy to read stuff and uh, i really enjoyed that and that's why i kind of randomly just uh, sent you a message that thank Perfect. you for doing this so this is why we're here now yeah exactly and uh i have just i have these side documents on my computer with like hundreds of research research studies that i have to still like collect and take parts and improve those articles right now they are short but i also want to prove and provide proof and scientific correlations to different processes so the big work in progress exactly um you said you had uh parasites dysbiosis and yeast as like your main symptoms how do you get yeah, also how did you get also uh skin skin issues and some minor issues like uh back i i hurt my back in the gym like two years ago and uh it has also some some stuff with the hip for that and also some uh different kind of stomach pain which i was kind of connecting it to, to pancreas but of course you know they, it's not like uh, diagnosed or anything like that yeah but i say this because what happened after after the after the fast was very interesting okay so we'll get that in the get to that in a second <laughs> uh, but that's the one when you mentioned like uh, you thought it was pancreas pain but you don't really know a hundred percent and that's so many people in this world um may have multiple different things and it's very hard to diagnose and that's why dry fasting is such a beautiful thing because who cares if it's your liver pancreas or kidney dry fasting is going to heal everything at the same slowly kill everything at the same time um well i, I don't i'm still at the kind of i'm experimenting with mm -hmm. the with the technique and it's uh, also i like what i liked in the filona retreat there's uh, there was many people with the different kind of illnesses and very severe severe ones and uh, myself it was like a little bit discomfort and I, I was just enough crazy to to go there with this uh, quite uh you definitely went early tough. most people yeah. study research try a little bit and then maybe later they go but yeah, you're just like yeah. oh, i'm buying my ticket yeah i'm just just uh, hopping in so let's move on and let's talk about that the retreat just like give us every information uh, as much as you can from the day you landed there how was it to like this progression of the days yeah first of all uh there's quite uh, good good rules for pre preparation so one one month one month uh, good diet vegetable vegetable based diet uh also this liver cleanse once twice um short fasts before that liver course. cleanse i would really like for you to elaborate on it because i know a lot of people have questions about liver cleanses all day long yeah well um like how what was it what yeah, did you, you take use? like how uh, was you it? take like uh, binders binders for a couple of days like three days uh th three times a day before meals what and, was your uh, binders uh, i was doing the enteros gel but you can of course use whatever there are differences uh, like uh, charcoal, uh, 
different kind of products for that. Um, milder ones are bentonite, clay, um, stuff like that. Uh, Enteros gel is kind of Eastern. I don't know if you can find it from, maybe in Amazon. Yes, you can find it. And that's very good. It's just Easy a gel? To, it's kind of gel, yeah. yeah. What is it called? Three times Entero... a day. Enteros gel. Enteros gel. Enteros gel. gel. Oh, I see it already on Google. Yeah. It says yeah. Apteca store. So that's something in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can find it from Amazon. I, I believe I said, saw that. But yeah, I usually recommend charcoal. Uh, I do charcoal before as a prep. So that's the, the yeah. binder. Um, okay. Then there's uh, after these three days, there's a day that, that we do the liver cleanse. And uh, it's done by... Um, done by uh, castor oil and uh, lemon juice. So in the morning you wake up, uh, eat rice without salt, without anything, just rice porridge a little bit, and then drinking lots of water and maybe three, four uh, p.m. Um, taking the correct amount of castor oil mixed with uh, lemon juice. And then you start to uh, extreme everything like uh, diarrhea kind of stuff starts to happen and uh, everything comes out it uh, also uh, it also uh, helps the bile uh, like bile discharge yeah 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 like it comes uh, out as labor. well yeah 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 and yeah. Uh, so that's the, also the point and after that in the evening a little bit rice porridge again and that's it were you and then, were you doing this at home uh, by yourself before you yes. arrived? Yes. How yes. much castor oil and lemon juice were you using? Uh, it's uh, one milliliter per uh, how much you weigh per kilogram, and, and half of that yeah. for lemon juice. And you ate so for rice example, porridge. So, I'm, I'm I'm like eighty kilos. Then I take eighty milliliters of castor oil and 40 milliliters of uh, lemon juice. Perfect. And, yeah. Um, yeah, after that, you start to water fast for one or two days. So that's very effective. That's very good reset for the whole digestive system. And uh, it, it really worked. It really, uh, it really worked for me. And that was the main thing why I started to really, really study about the dry fasting and uh yes did fill in the did main, you, main things mm -hmm. did you get um so you did you sign up already for the retreat and then you were told what to do to prepare or were you told what to do before uh, so there's a uh, two online courses you can buy and one is uh, liver cleanse and one is uh, kind of short uh 36 hours 72 hours dry fast you can buy and in those, and also there's a 21, 21 day uh, preliminary program or preparation program for longer fasts. So you can buy these uh, online and that's, uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. There's, uh, everything is exactly, exactly uh, told how to do it. So you did about a month of preparation before flying out. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, of course, uh, I got the lab results like six months or seven months ago. So I had done lots of cleaning before. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's great. I, I think a lot of people don't prepare properly for dry fast. And that's the biggest problem with new people towards the space. And then they have problems and uh, complications because of this. And then they say dry fasting doesn't work and uh, it gives it a bad name. Yeah, uh -huh. I think the philo the beauty in the philosoph uh, Filonov's uh, process was that it's really, it's not just let's stop eating and drinking and then then see what happens. It's completely different than that. Yeah. So it's uh, the preparation is very very important, and the refeeding is also very very important. Uh, yeah. So so walk us now through. You are fly. You arrive by the airplane. How was the yes. first day? Yeah, so I was kind of, we're fasting one day before, so we come there to the second day, and every day there's a lecture of one hour with questions and answers. Also, there's a, a one hour 
one hour uh, treatment like uh, belly massage, uh, honey massage, uh, dry cupping, um, very kind of uh, also exotic, exotic uh, types of treatments. Uh, does and, the uh, honey, what does the honey cupping do? Wait, is it well, cupping with honey or just a massage with honey? Yeah, it sounds like very nice and relaxing, <laughs> but it's a uh, it's a uh, very painful effect. <laughs> so it's kind of ripping your skin off from the from your body with honey. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of uh, not so nice, but it's very effective in uh, all these treatments are very effective in uh, activating the blood flow in the, in in the tissue and uh, also activating you know the intestines and the massaging the intestines and blood flow, flow there and uh, all the other flows also like uh, lymph flow stuff like that so uh, i believe those uh, treatments are very very important during a uh, effective effective dry fasting also yeah i uh, i recommend for people doing it at home um i use this ball and it's called gut smashing or gut rolling and you put it underneath your stomach and your organs and you use your body to to move around and massage yourself yeah i use this oh, how do you use it? just hit it's yourself like a meat, meat, ham <laughs> meat hammer just pushing the pushing the belly aha uh -huh. it's a very good tool i can't you can find, find you know book. yeah i don't know where i put it I'll find it later. But yeah, it's just like this ball like this and has these ball bumps all over it. So it's like Exactly, I know that. Like yeah. fascia, fascia ball. Yeah, I'm not sure about the name, but yeah. And third thing we did every day is like walking a lot. Like um uh, it's very good in Montenegro you have uh, mountains and you have the sea there and uh you can walk and uh, the goal is to walk like 10 kilometers per day. So like 5, 6, 7 miles per day. So wow. quite a lot. Yeah. And that's also, it, it, it keeps the lymph and blood moving. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's also very good. Yeah, I'm uh, almost on day six right now, dry fasting. Okay. okay. Yeah, very close to day six. Uh, so you're I, pretty used to, to you, your energy levels and everything is cool, eh? Yeah, today I'm perfect, like perfection. Um, yeah. But I know that if I if I went for a six kilometer walk, that would be uh, very very different. Um, yeah. I'm just recording, so I'm not doing any almost any exercise. I just use uh, lymph uh, jumping around, maybe some jumping jacks, just get a few times a day, yeah. make sure the lymph's moving some stretches, um, and organ yeah. rolling. But uh, this is a, an import a very interesting thing that that on the Filanov retreats you go for such long walks uh, and yeah. so, so much walking. Some people it's argue very, that, that uh, it's a little too much. Probably, yeah. I was just probably, talking yeah. with fasting with fasting with, with Trevor, who did the does the 20-day fast, and he's starting his own retreats in Guatemala. Uh, and one thing we actually discussed is talking about the Filanov method and how it's been kind of the same for 30 years and uh, that some people complain about too much walking. Um, mm. and there's this theory that I was discussing that they're potentially, because you're walking so much, you're actually, uh, putting more dehydration on your body. And you're, if you, you said you did an eight day fast, um, if you are 8.5 and if you had walked so much, maybe the effects were actually of like a 10 day fast of not moving around as much mm -hmm. on the body. Yeah. So there's like these theories with your water level dropping and uh, how much and how powerful the autophagy is and how powerful the osmotic system is. Um, but that's really interesting. Um, Maybe it's also a little, little bit challenging the body to make more water in a way. So it's also, maybe it's also uh, theoretically more effective cleansing, cleansing from the, the toxins from the uh, fat tissue yeah and maybe that's why Filanov doesn't go to 11 anymore because of he's realized that uh the walking doesn't really allow you to safely go that far um because uh, I, I have no idea yeah there's just theory um yeah. <laughs> but that's interesting so as the days progressed at the retreat as you got deeper and deeper into the fast did anything change did uh did any protocols or massages or advice or food or anything change not uh, food well, 
I started to do ice ice uh, dosing with water also like it was seventh day I guess they so provided it's, it uh, yeah so it's they they said it's uh, it has had a very good results especially with the cancer cancer phase one and phase two patients and uh, that's also one one uh, technique to activate your body like a short cold shock uh, three times a day and I started to do that and I do lots of cold in uh, Finland so I go to the lakes and swim and stuff like that so for me that was very natural but it's kind of it's not like compulsory but uh, mm -hmm. you can choose to do that uh, that's one thing also the treatments are changing uh, according to the need of the of the patient and uh, also your wishes I went through like everything so you told them give me everything well <laughs> yeah there's some you know uh, very interesting things like bees bee venom and stuff like that you get bee stings every day like many times uh, strong strong uh, dry cupping that's also I still have bruises in my legs and it's like more than two weeks now Wow. Oh, wow. so yeah, I definitely definitely can say that it's not like a pleasant uh, nice uh, relaxing massage you know it's, so it's more like also a challenge to the mind that you can really take the pain Yeah, and no. uh, I I also uh, it's one 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 thing why I went to the retreat is like uh, the mind and the uh, The spiritual side of the fasting Like and discipline uh, the deeper and mental the fast sorry discipline and mental game has to be really strong. yeah so i teach also like uh, i train people in stress management so this is also a very good uh, way to kind of uh, uh, live live uh, through my my own own techniques or walk my own talk Exactly. and uh the other side is also like this surrender to the when the mind and body becomes very weak then you kind of surrender to the divine or uh kind of meditation prayer life it becomes totally different during fasting because it's kind of live in the bubble you're not eating or you're drinking it's like a different mind uh, state completely I agree. uh, compared to the normal so it was very interesting also and i did the video diary about the whole thing so it was it became pretty uh intense uh emotional release also for me like day five day six i started to cry and uh you know lots of things from the past and you know challenges in life kind of comes comes to the surface when the kind of guard or uh, there's no guard when the food and everything is away then you're kind of more vulnerable and more there's more space to things to come from uh, come to the surface from the unconscious so i really felt that was very big part of the healing process or the experience uh, completely surrendering to the process and letting everything come out what comes you know just a little bit of science uh when it comes to meditation and that feeling that you have during a fast where like people call it the flow state where you just are in a completely deeper uh, mind spiritual place and it actually has to do a lot with um when you are dry fasting you're burning so much fat that it uh, changes from like protein catabolism to fat catabolism and mm. that creates these ketone bodies in your I'm sure you've heard of ketosis, like the diet of Yeah. keto diet. So it creates such huge amounts of ketones. And studies are showing us that ketones basically put you into a flow state. They actually, they, so you're, there's two, the nervous system can be sympathetic or parasympathetic. And uh, parasympathetic is the meditative state. It's the relaxing, it's the one that is the subconscious. So uh, by toning down the sympathetic it basically puts you in a flow state so that's really interesting because that is something that everybody says when i'm dry fasting on day five day six i'm so much better when it comes to meditation it's so much deeper it's so more much more raw and i was going to ask you how much did did you meditate on this uh, retreat did you meditate the same amount every day uh not really i went with the flow um uh 
uh i didn't i kind of felt it was weird <laughs> in a way you had the all all the day you had time for meditation and uh but i really didn't have that uh energy so much for uh, like i felt my my, my uh, state was more like uh I could not distract myself with almost anything. I could not distract myself with uh, uh, watching anything from the uh, cell phone, not even meditation. Like uh, even my prayers were like, I'm sorry that I, I, I'm not able to pray. You know, like it was very like, like uh, going through this only. And maybe it was only me that this time I, I just needed to focus completely on fasting in a way, or this new state. And uh, yeah. Well, you said you were watching uh, my videos or the the website. So what were you watching in the downtime? Uh, I was just reading some articles, like uh, maybe two two articles about about dry fasting. I don't remember what they were. Okay, okay. Yeah. So do you, what about other guests? Did you interact with them during the days? Uh, quite, uh, quite a little uh, during fasting. Uh, that was a conscious choice, but a little bit, little bit, yes. And after, when the refeeding started, of course, then, then uh, we started. I started to be more social, also. How did that look like? Was it everybody in one room? Uh, during the le lec lectures, everybody's in the one room. Uh, otherwise. Everybody's just walking on the beach or in nature uh, or staying at the room. And it was, I was also, I felt I was uh, one of the few that really felt good all the time, like uh, physically, because I was not like sick, sick. Mm. I'm very healthy and uh, I've been uh, doing lots of uh, cleansing and, you know, quite good, uh, quite good uh, life habits currently and, and, and the last months and uh, there were lots of people with uh, severe sicknesses and they really also uh, uh, suffered more of nausea and uh, headaches and uh, all different kind of stuff. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it's interesting because uh, that's where so much contraindications come into play with, with people that have certain very severe illnesses. Even if you read Filinov's book and a bunch of other uh, stuff on dry fasting, they always say if your kidneys or liver are t bad disease or if you have type 1 diabetes or very aggressive cancer, you it's a scary time to dry fast because in the past there has been situations where people that are already so close to death dry fast and the dry fast speeds it up instead of helping them mm -hmm. because it's too late to dry fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, that's interesting. Do you know what people had? Like, uh, do you know if uh, when people were refeeding, how long did you refeed there? And did you see improvements in the other guests? Like, did they say, wow, this healed me? Or did you hear anything about that? Uh, I think uh, when you uh, when you when you have had the fast, uh, what what Dr. Filanov says is like 70 percent of the results comes in, in the exit exit period. So it's like uh, the exit period is uh, one month after the after the fast. So when being very sick, I think it's more likely to enjoy the <laughs> enjoy the pain also <laughs> after the after the fast. Personally, I got very very good results and almost almost like immediately and uh, also during during fasting already I saw. Uh, skin improvements and uh, as of course stomach stomach issues were gone and uh, also after the one and two weeks of exit I have uh, had a very very good feeling in the skin uh, almost everything in the skin has improved also everything in the stomach has improved the pancreas type of type of pain uh, has disappeared completely uh, and what was weird, I think it was third or fourth or fifth day of fasting, the back pain and the hip pain was uh, improving a lot. It might be, of course, vacation. It might be just rest, uh, whatever. It, I, I, I'm not saying that dry fasting is kind of doing this permanently for everybody or even me. 
I still experiment with that and I'm, I'm in the beginning phase of the recovery and exit. So, but what I, I would say, I, I feel like intuitively, I feel this is very good tool for me and I will use this tool uh, also in future, uh, definitely. And uh, now it's going to be like once in a week, a short, like 36 hour uh, fast. Not like every week it has to be or something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more like I go with the flow and the feeling, but Maintenance. listening to my body. Yeah. And then, then a little bit longer sometimes and maybe once a year longer one. But I think I'm going to do a longer one in the, in the autumn already. So. Yeah, that's a did Phil Love recommend you to continue at home and do another one because that's a common practice to uh to to continue because if you don't wait too long then you can let your body start from a higher position during the fast. Yeah, the basic basic kind of uh, uh, basic maintenance and uh, and uh, to not like trying to prevent disease diseases not to not to come. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, 36 hours per week, uh, three or four times a year, you do three, three days and then once a year, maybe seven days, if you like. That's the basic maintenance and uh, kind of uh, prevention style. If you have a sick sickness like, uh, like long COVID, as you had uh, arthritis, uh, Lyme's disease, you have probably heard about uh, Michelle. Slater, mm -hmm. Lyme's disease. There were lots of Lyme's disease people there. Uh, then it's like uh, uh, you get the cumulative cumulative effect of the fast when you do a long fast, and then within the two months period you start another one. And uh, yes, and then maybe another one if the doctor doctor uh, prescribes it. Yeah, that was my strategy. Um, yeah, to to heal long COVID, it had to be cumulative fasts. Make exactly, sure that the refeed exactly. was good. You can't wait too long, but you do have to give it some time and let the stem cell regeneration do some work, and then you want to jump yeah. in. Yeah, I think mostly people are doing like waiting for about mo one month, and after that you start to take the one spoon of uh, baking soda in the mornings and uh, and start to prepare for the next. How does you prepare with that? What the with the baking soda? Did you follow that before yeah, like the fast? Every every day, yeah, every day. For like how long early did you start? Uh, one month. Every day, one month baking soda to prepare the kidneys, right? Yeah, pre pre prepare the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because kidneys, it's also a probably a uh, effect to the pH too, and you know, a lot many of effects with them. A lot of people uh, talk about taking baking soda after after a dry fast. Um, That's uh, in this this uh, protocol. It's strongly uh, not suggested. Not not suggested. Yes, because the uh, he says like it it really uh, stops the healing process when you when you start to play with the acidity with that baking soda afterwards Interesting. so no no uh baking soda afterwards in these internet sites and uh facebook pages many people are doing yep. that yeah so he's he's really strongly against that and also enemas during the during the dry fast which is uh i believe in the august dunning book yeah that's what i was gonna say dunning recommends it yeah that's uh that's not in this protocol and I don't know. Personally, I don't know. Uh, I simply uh, chose this uh, expert and uh, jumped in and did everything that that was uh, proposed there. And I get experience only this one. I, I have not tried tried uh, different kind of protocols with dry fasting yet. I'm just taking a quick look here. Yeah, I I usually say no to baking soda. Um, I don't like it right after the fast, and specifically from my my reasoning is uh, so some I was because I was uh, just talking with Trevor like uh, yesterday or two days ago, and uh, he recommends for people that have very severe kidney pain 
uh, when they're breaking the fast because some people have kidney injuries or maybe years of kidney stones and stuff like that and the acidity is uh causing them to quit the fast but so much pain as like everything dislodges and the acidity just drops so low so acidic mm -hmm. that uh it's almost like they need a cure right away and for those people a little bit of baking soda gets rid of the pain very very quickly but like mm -hmm. you said there's a good chance that it stops a little bit of the healing but it saves you in the moment yeah, yeah, yeah. but otherwise i totally agree i i don't do it and i don't do it mainly because in the body we have this mechanism um and it's like the when the fasting starts and the fat starts uh, getting metabolized and your acidity levels keep rising your body is constantly fighting to keep the ph and the blood at the same level so it has so mm -hmm. many processes to fight and one yep. of them is ammonia mixes with the keto acid salts and it, it neutralizes each other and in that neutralization your body creates bicarbonate which is the main reason you take baking soda so your body mm -hmm. already knows how to create its own bicarbonate but people that take the baking soda, they disrupted that mechanism very quickly. Yeah. And baking soda has sodium, which I'm sure you are aware, Filinov says, don't eat salt uh, yeah, yeah. after. Yeah, taking very quickly, uh, lots of salt can can make uh, blow the body up. very big. <laughs> yeah, it's called edema, right? You blow up um yeah. with water and that's another issue with a lot of new people to dry fasting that try three days four days and then they eat salt right after and they are so surprised that they weigh more than when they started the dry fast mm. so that's a big yeah. big issue but yeah i was looking at my protocol and uh, it says there's no baking soda so i'm like oh thank god i didn't put that in yeah and also enemas enemas during the dry fast should not uh, be done. Yep. Because uh, like uh, it's sucking the sucking the everything kind of in <laughs> from the from the wrong mouth. Yeah, it's similar to you don't you don't put you don't put water in your mouth too. No, 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 nothing. Some people try and drink some, swish it around and spit it out, and that's not good either. Well, you can do of course uh, different stuff when it's completely dry then of course body has to deal with that situation so that affects like what process is, is going on in the body if you're playing with the water in the mouth with the skin you know it's uh, it's probably a different kind of situation for the body i'm not saying it's worse but uh, mm -hmm. so that was a hard dry fast what what was done there exception is the cold dosing so oh yeah i could talk about that a little bit more uh so not it, like, not everyone uh, did it right no it's uh if you're not used to it there's always risk that uh, your body doesn't you know can't cope with it when it's already in a quite kind of weak situation but if you are used to it and it works then it's uh kind of enhancing the healing effects according to to the doctor i believe it i've tried i've tried both i really don't like soft dry fasting i only hard dry fast um yeah I've uh, tried soft and I feel like once you get to like eight and nine days and if you do the soft dry fasting, it makes it actually harder to continue. Yeah, it affects you mentally, probably. something with the skin and it, it makes it harder. But um, I tried a long time ago. I did uh, warm water uh, for soft dry fast, like around days, maybe seven. And that destroyed my my ability to continue and then another time i said okay i'm never doing that again and i tried freezing cold water only and mm. that gives you like a power and a motivation yeah. to keep going exactly. there's, there's a whole difference yeah. there yeah it's also a little bit addictive i i guess uh, it's like uh, something that you can kind of wait you know it's like three three, three times a day it's kind of nice it gives a uh, structure for the day but uh, it's also a little bit like I want more, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the because problem. You get, you get the you get the power, then you want more, and you so, get a taste of that water on your skin, and it's so addicting. And yeah, yeah. I think... I didn't have the urge to drink at all, but but I really I really wanted like another one in in one or two hours. That's why I don't do it anymore. I I go longer and easier without jumping in any water. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think the most easiest one probably is that don't touch water, don't think about it. Nothing. 
and tape your mouth when you're sleeping. That's my most important thing. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a good thing if you if your mouth gets open. Yeah, surgical tape and even during the day. I'm obviously not listening to my own rules with the interview because I shouldn't be talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, ho it should be fine. Um, yeah. So how how was it when you ended the retreat? Did every a lot of people end at the same time? Did you guys go as a group on an airplane? Or to the airport? Uh, no, no. It's like from all over the world. People from America, South America, South Africa, Europe. Oh, wow. I think I was the only one from Scandinavia. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, we start with uh, hot water, and then a special drink to get the probiotics. And after that, uh, slowly, slowly, with a very... Uh, well prepared, pre well prepared, very uh, small, small, not tasty, not tasty food, foods. Do you remember what and, the foods were? Um, yeah. Uh, after the water, we start to drink the kind of nice, I love it, love the taste. It's a kind of compote. Yeah, fruit compote. Yeah, so you boil the boil the prunes and apricots and raisins and uh, you make kind of nice drink out of it and not not eating the eating the fruit and it was amazing how much you can drink that it's like mm -hmm. i got seven kilos in one day really <laughs> back yeah like uh, it, it, did it he did, were you allowed to drink as much as you want or was there limits yes yes it was just drinking and uh, in the first night there's already a meal that's Includes uh, non salty, non salty uh, vegetables, vegetable soup in a way. Vegetable soup, like was it blended into like a perfectly blended, or did you have pieces of vegetable in it? If you think that you're a prisoner in Alcatraz prison and you think about what they give there, it's like this so, almost like nothing. It was like a disappointment, you know. Like uh, you want to, of course, eat, and but. Was it one it was bowl, like, or were you allowed to go back it, for more? It was one bowl, and yes, you're allowed to eat more. I was not sure it was the first day, but after that, you can eat as as much as you want. Mm -hmm. But you don't want that much. Yeah. And then it was like uh, going slowly, slowly during the day. It was going up. And uh, porridges, porridges, buckwheat, millet, oats. It was very nice. That's a thing where a lot of people uh, have different views, especially when it comes to porridge, because a lot of people don't eat grains. They don't uh, believe yeah. in eating grains, right? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, buckwheat is great. <laughs> also making making bread out of it and uh, also porridge is uh, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Millet I don't like personally so much for the taste, but uh, oats also work very well for me. So I like I like this the foods in this protocol I like uh, naturally and feels very good for me so I like it. When you also some fruit fruit uh, very small amounts of fruit and uh, in uh, not the first second day but you know later stages. Like day three and up. Uh, I, I I don't remember like. What kind of fruit was it? Just you know like uh, apples. Uh, Orange, oranges is like heaven. Mm -hmm. They're like they they were the kind of first food that you really like. It you really enjoy. Other other things were like you could not do that so strictly at home. You know, you you start to use a little bit salt or something. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. But that was very good. I loved it in the retreat that they really have a strict strict uh, strict food and good portions. Stuff. And that's the thing yeah. I tell people, because I think number one, if you're doing it on your own, you can't control yourself. I think, especially if most beginners, they can't control themselves. They yeah, eat a little bit and yeah. their brain takes over like a monster. Yeah, yeah. And really, it's really easy. I even did uh, 40, 48 hours and uh, 60 hours. And uh, I started to skip, you know, like a little bit faster. But I got very good uh, teaching there because I, I really burned my, I got visible blisters in the in the throat when I started uh, refeeding. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's very important to be uh, 
very very uh, strict with that do you know why you got the blisters what was the explanation well explanation is not so easy uh, i found from the internet a couple of cases that have the same uh, it's something that body is simply uh, it's kind of allergic reaction type of thing it doesn't hurt for maybe five minutes or so it's like a reaction and then it goes away but it didn't happen there uh, in the montenegro retreat oh, okay it didn't happen when we went, did the things right. So I really like this, uh, this protocol. So for anyone that's listening to this right now and is trying to do their something by themselves, uh, I think that a tip is I, what I tell people is divide your food, prepare in advance and know how much you're going to eat. And then when you're preparing your meals, put them into boxes. And this is what, this is 12 o'clock, this is 3 o'clock, just so that you're not there in the kitchen preparing it and that monster takes over and you just start eating. Well, even if you do that, <laughs> it's still might, tough. you might get this idea, maybe, maybe another one. <laughs> maybe two uh, boxes instead of one. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were people who had tried this kind of thing also, you know, telling this story that, okay, it was not enough. <laughs> Uh, we went with the probiotics that you got at the uh, retreat on day one, right? You got them first day when you broke your fast? Yes, and followed by uh, uh, ne in next days you get kefir. Uh, day milk, two? Milk kefir. Uh, day day two, or maybe even, no, day two maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah I always, I love milk kefir. That's one or of the most one. important ones. Even day one? Uh, yeah, I, I, I make it my own own uh, kefir at home that's the best today one. i tasted my first tibetan tibetan strain and it works well it was better than the american one wait do you have different strains yeah yeah <laughs> so you're growing different kefirs like on your house like a science project yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool yeah, the buck, buckwheat bread is also coming there in the I will send you the recipe because it's like most simple bread there is in the world. Okay, it's very healthy, easy I, to do. I would love to try it. Yeah. yeah but uh, tell my... us, tell us about the kefir. That's very interesting. Uh, what types? How long have you been making your own kefir? Uh, what are the taste differences, and what kind of varieties do you have? I have only these two. Uh, it's called Coral from. Uh, that's originally from United States. I don't know where. I bought it from Finland. A Finnish. Finnish uh, woman, and uh, also I bought from her the uh, Tibetan, and then she said also there's uh, she has uh, strains from Caucasus, like the original, from, uh, far far from uh, Russia or something like That's that. That's where people know. say that it originated from the Caucasus Mountains. Ah, okay. That's yeah, where the yeah, first yeah. kefir in the world was stolen from oh, and yeah. spread around and the world. There was some story about uh, story about it was Prophet Prophet Muhammad who was. Uh, Poss was inventing that yeah. possibly possibly yeah I, something I, like that I, yeah. I, read it. I heard there was also a story where someone from italy like tried to marry their that some king tried to marry his daughter to the caucus prince them so that and she tried to once she was married she tried to steal the grains for the italians and she stole some and then in italy it grew and then it spread around the world uh-huh yeah but it really uh I can feel it in my body, like in the body and mind and taste and everything likes that. It's it's like uh, I have really, I enjoy kefir a lot, a lot. A lot of people that try it for the first time, especially in America or Canada, uh, uh, a lot of places in the world where the, you, if people eat kind of junk food and they eat pr a lot of processed food and they try kefir and they think it's disgusting. So, uh. and then it's the only the people that really are disciplined and want to improve their health they force themselves to drink it and within a few weeks they grow that perfect taste and you start to love it and you don't want anything yeah. else yeah, so it has to do yeah. with your gut bacteria and, and obviously getting rid of worst foods and getting your tongue and your taste buds used to actually eating good food yeah yeah that's also a very important point that uh, after the fast it was it's been very uh, the body body is more uh, sensitive to stuff, so uh, you really can for the first two weeks even uh, you can really feel what works and what doesn't. And uh, for example, uh, very good quality raw chocolate. Uh, uh, my body doesn't like it. 
<laughs> and so I love it, but it doesn't work. Like so these how kind good of things. quality from the store, or are you talking about uh, what kind uh, of? Well, uh, from the from the organic organic kind of store. Mm -hmm. It's the but I'm not not from the from the jungle or anything like that. <laughs> Have you made uh, your own chocolate before at home? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I wonder. I get a little bit nausea if I eat it a lot. I get nausea a little bit, and I can feel like it's coming backwards. Mm -hmm. So it's like not this. But it also can be can be about the theobromine or or, or the fat content. Yeah. It's like because fat is not kind of easy for my diet. I have the I lack the enzyme enzyme that uh, digests fat. So maybe very big like fat amounts in a in a very short of time is not the best strategy for me. Oh, so you so have keto, specific keto problem. carnivore didn't work for me at all. Oh. I, I, I did like three four months in the. It really didn't work. I could not, could not function well. So. That's interesting. Do you know what the enzyme is? Do you know what it's called? Ah, uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do, but I don't remember now. I can send it. I have the. But that's interesting. I have the reports from the lab. Oh, uh, that's very interesting. I guess that that explains why some people can't do carnivore and keto. Um, I think so. I think that was the main reason for me to fail. My brain was working well, but my body, you know, I could not exercise and, you know. All right. And carnivore and keto is get so popular because it mimics a little bit of the fasting environment with uh, no carbs and ketone bodies and autophagy. Um, yeah, but... many people get very good results with the both of them. And that's that's for sure. Simply, in my case, I like uh, it works better with the with the with the carbs and plant based. Yeah. But there are some um, problems with the carnivore diet. Uh, I usually say that it's sure. a great tool, but people who fanatically fall in love with it and they eat nothing else for a year or two years, then they can never eat plants again for the rest of their lives. They destroy gut bacteria that to digest fiber. And then they eat some broccoli and then they are on the toilet for two days. Yeah, I kind of, uh, after the carnivore keto... Uh... Then my, my my farting farting kind of <laughs> began, like then the flatulence, all the all the stomach issues started, and also the kind of smell from the armpits was completely changed. So there was something happening there after the keto carnivore mm -hmm. that uh, my my gut dis dis dysbiosis started, for sure. That was a, and I could not I could not solve it. I could not solve it easily so that led me to this great tool of dry fasting too yeah well even i i've played around with carnivore and keto before and had some good results with it um i but like i said i believe it's a tool if you need it in the moment for anti-inflammatory and maybe he, helping a little bit i don't like thinking of it as forever or a long-term use uh but maybe for you it was because you because of that fat enzyme that you were talking about um Wait, oh yeah, sorry, I was going to say something, but what I'm trying to say is dry fasting is always the winner. If uh, if the people that do keto and carnivore knew about dry fasting, they would have never even had to try keto and carnivore. Uh-huh. Well, you are I like keto. Yourself, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping me and you understand that at a certain level now, and we just have to convince more people to try it. How many, uh, you have done a lots of uh, extended dry fast, right? I've done uh, two nine days, one 11 day, and this one I'm doing is going to 11 record, fully recorded. And if I feel good, I will push it further than 11. Okay, okay. Why, why do you want to push it further? Uh, I, at this point, I enjoy it, and I kind of want to see where my body can go, uh, hopefully okay. as safely as possible. Uh, and a part of me uh, wants to provide i have this whole setup i have a camera there a camera here watches my whole room i, I mm -hmm. sleep in here too I, that's my bed so yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. never leave the room so this is like okay. a, have you seen that movie the truman show where like his life is always yeah. recorded yeah. so i don't want to waste this opportunity so if i feel great by 11 i will continue a little bit longer okay okay
I don't recommend this for anybody. This is not a healthy way to drive yeah. fast. You should not do it in a room. This is, and I know that, but yeah, me too. And I, I don't even, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't even have a goal there. You know, I, you know, it's like more about health and uh, listening to the body, but still uh, challenging the body and uh, trying to just get best re results. But I'm not really thinking about like how many days I can do or something like that. <laughs> because I think it's a, it can be very risky, you know. Yes. It can be very risky because we don't know what's happening without supervision, you know. And these, like you talked about 20 days and stuff like that, it's, it's very, very risky. You can't, you can't get back, you know. <laughs> yes, so for sure. Body, body starts to, you know, reject water and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, that's why also so, my, yeah. my refeed protocol for people going longer is even, it's longer than fill in ups. Um, I, yeah. You, I always turn it into a bit of a water fast and then very slowly introduce food. Um, and probiotics is the most important one. That's why I was so interested. In, do you even know what probiotic you were given uh, at the retreat? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like a special, special recipe. It was not um, a pill form, like powder that was put into your water? No, 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 no. no uh, okay. No, so, not, nothing. No pill. Okay. So it was no the Bolotov way then, most likely. Exactly. There was that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, made of celandine, celandine herbs. Uh -huh. It's like three weeks to brew it. Uh, yeah. No pills. Mm -hmm. No supplements. So no nothing. Kefir is obviously, I think, one of the best in the world for probiotics. And uh... I, I, I would say so. You know, I feel so. Uh, I've tried a lot, lots of things within that that area it works for me like very well it's also one function is that if you enjoy something very 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 much you know of course you can enjoy a candy but you know it's a little bit different kind of enjoyment you can feel that it's good for the body like uh, also when you have a reset the system and then you start to refeed with the uh for example oranges you can feel it's like the body wants oranges but you don't know why but it's kind of it's not only the taste it's more like it's sucking sucking it in <laughs> like mm -hmm. thank you it's kind of deeper deeper way of uh enjoyment as i've uh, as i would put it yeah and kefir has something something the same and some days you don't want that that's also interesting and I, I believe that's very good uh, when you reset the system and you're kind of walked the path of uh, purification and uh, uh, knowing your body and the diet that works for it, uh, then you kind of can go into this kind of intuitive, intuitive way of eating and it really works. Of course, if you're eating like uh, trash all the time, then intuitive eating is like eating candy of course mm -hmm. i like candy i eat candy but when you're kind of out of that with a more pure syst uh, system then then it's easier to follow what the body really uh, wants and what's what what sing signals come from the body yeah exactly uh i was gonna say for people that are listening not everybody is gonna get bolotov away or even want to figure it out how to make themselves that. So I will recommend for them to find a really good probiotic, um, hopefully in capsules that you can open so that you're not ingesting any extra stuff and just you can mix it with your uh, water that has cooled down a little bit and drink that. And this is for, because there's thousands of people out there that do three days, four days, and they're not going to do a bolt of whey or any creation. Yeah. And you can't have kefir right away. Even you can't have it the first few hours. You need water and uh, come out of that. Maybe dry maybe mixing with uh, mixing with the hot water would work, mm -hmm. like very small amount. Yeah, exactly. I so. That's what I would recommend for those people. And uh, yeah. I've tried it before as well. And but not hot water, or you'll kill the bacteria. So oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Let the let the if you boil the water, then let it cool down a little bit. It could be slightly warm, and then you mix it into that. Yeah. Um, I was gonna and say, and you can of course find find the courses that they're they're uh, providing, like the twenty one day program of uh, Filonovs and uh, 
and that's also on, deliver claims on their website, and, uh, right? Yeah, I think so. You can find it from the internet. Okay, perfect. Uh, health universe, health universe. Then you can find those. Perfect. They had the courses in Udemy, but uh, I I believe they have changed them. Uh, yeah. There's some process of uh, changing changing the place or something like that. Yeah, Udemy right. takes a huge cut of the profits, so I know that from. Uh, maybe maybe heard that's that before. Reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm thinking maybe in. You were saying you were going to try another dry fast soon, uh, in like a month. Uh, no, I, I'm going to go uh, with uh, with a uh, maintenance protocol. I was asking, in fact, this uh, from the from the doctor himself, mm -hmm. and uh, I will do another one in uh, September. You will do another what in September? Another long one in. Uh, oh, September. so in about six months, five months. Yeah. So it's not going to be like cumulative. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, I think the, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's like, it's more like a little bit like uh, spiritual, spiritual uh, motivation right now. Yeah. So, and I, I would say like also this first one was like more, I felt like calling to do this. I felt like intuitively like, okay, it's pretty hard stuff and I'm not that sick, but you know, I kind of felt I need to do this. And uh, so I'm kind of following these kind of inner guidance and something like that in my life. You're, so that's why, yeah. Your noise is crackling a little bit. It started like a oh, few really? minutes ago. Do you, anything you can change? Like the microphone or something? Plug right it now? in. I'll say it, talk again. Hello, hello. Yeah, there's a bit of a crackle. I don't know if it's me. Uh, can you hear me normally? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. So well, we'll see. Maybe it's this. maybe I take these away. It just started like three minutes ago. I'm still going on. Okay, let's try this. Uh, you have to say something. Let's see. Can you hear me? Yes, it's crackling a little bit. Um, it's not too bad though. Wow. But I but I was thinking that we should probably wrap this up. I was going to say when you do your next big dry fast, let's check in again and talk about the differences between both of them, because that would be really good. Uh, yeah. How it evolved, how your health went, and how the other fast went as well. Yeah. And I'll obviously keep in touch, um, because I would love to know how your healing goes over the next month as well. So so if you would let yeah. me know, that would be great. And how can people reach you that are looking for like a breathing coach, or maybe they, someone's in Finland and wants to reach out to you? Uh, well, yeah, I, I can put uh, put you a message uh, link, uh, breathingman.fi. That's Breathing the Man. easiest, okay. easiest way. It's mostly in Finnish. There's a small page in English also because I'm f mostly focusing on Finland. So, but yeah. Perfect. Yeah, send me the stuff and I'll upload it under the video for anybody interested. Yeah, and I can put also the courses that they are they're, uh, providing for these pretty... Uh, preparation and stuff like that so yeah perfect perfect we'll put all under the video okay uh r2 thank you so much for joining us and all everybody that's watching got to uh got to get a first-hand experience of the filinov uh retreat so thank you for sharing that with us and uh hopefully we'll talk again yes we are okay perfect thanks so much for coming on <laughs> Thank you very much for you too. Okay. Thank you everybody for listening and take care. See you in the next one. Bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.